Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. September 19th, 2021, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Determined Length, episode number 617. And how is that for a perfect intro? Especially with our special guest here, Edward Angelini Cook. Yeah! <laughs> What does your shirt say? Hi. Careful, he's a hub dealer. dealer. Oh, cute. (laughs) Just dealing out the hugs. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Would you like to buy a hug? (laughs) The first one's Yeah, I got... (laughs) Oh, no. Of course it is. (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) That's... Oh, anyway. Hey, Lloyd arrived. First blow is from me. Rest will cost you. <laughs> what will it cost me? Oh. Uh-huh. Good, good, good. Well, welcome back, Ed. Uh, we well, are. Thanks for having me. Baby, you're always welcome. Uh, we are excited to continue on the Landscape of Relationships series, and I got one question for y'all, because I don't know the answer to this. Who's driving? Huh? That's a very good question. I know, it's a bit of a struggle. Bus. Driver? Struggle bus. Struggle bus. Get it? Wait. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh... Um, that's the title of the, the episode. Topic. Yeah, yeah. Did, did it take Damon that long? No, I was no. Okay, <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" I seriously <laughs> thought you got it right away, and then I really was not sure. <laughs> I was like, "What? What? Acting? Brilliant! <laughs> Look at me! I'm acting!" <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Ed, we kind of need some help with this one, because I don't think this this title is obvious to folks. Um, just, I, just as a, I kind of brief... get it, but, you know, a good explanation of, of to, for the, those uninitiated uh, mm-hmm. uh, who may, maybe they've never been on a struggle bus for some strange reason, but I'm sure somebody's had a struggle bus, uh, been on a struggle bus at times. Mm-hmm. They probably didn't even well, know it. So that's that's very true. Um, well, so one of the things that uh, I do, right, as a therapist, is I help people through struggles, right? Uh, whether it's individuals or couples, right? And one of the, you know, one of the things that um, has been really helpful is by normalizing struggle, um, and that like you know, in this kind of context, like conflict, right? Uh, That uh, every relationship is going to experience conflict. Uh, You really can't avoid it. And so we're going to talk about conflict. What? You mean no relationship, not every relationship is perfect and hunky-dory and everything, everyone gets along and there's no problems ever? Right. Oh, we never fight. Yeah. Oh, Lies. we never fight. Lies, Minnelli. Lies. I will say wait, that. Wait, 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 
maybe some people have determined the way that they work out their frustrations is instead of having arguments or fights, is they just fuck it out. Is that really solving the conflict, I mean, though? I'm looking Does to the therapist. Really I want to. I want, Does that I'm really to hear. resolve the, the 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 issue? Are we just ignoring the problem and moving on? Are 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 we incentivizing the conflict? But you know, having like if you're like either fucking it out or uh, having like even just some sort of friendly competition sort of thing, like like who can uh, hold on the longest while they're trying to while the other tries to stimulate them. Uh, uh, you know, different competitions like that, but still conflict. It's not like major, like like yelling at each other or even fisticuffs fighting. But it's there is a conflict there. Debates are a power conflict. Struggle, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, like uh, I think that. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that I often uh, run into is a lot of conflict avoidance. Uh, I think that a lot of times we are taught that when there's conflict or when there's struggles that there's that there it shouldn't be there. So we want to fight it. Um, so it's not so that it's not there. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not what we want to do. So like those those couples that say, um, oh, I don't fight. We don't ever fight. I mean, it is quite possible that they have a they have developed some just really good skills over the years so that they can manage these struggles um, with some of the skills that we're going to talk about um, mm -hmm. instead of some of the traps that we're going to kind of go over. Mm. Okay. All right, but I like that idea of fucking it out. <laughs> that's, kinda, that's, that's kinda hot. Yeah. That kind of sounds like me that it was endorsed. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, fine. So be it. I'm the one that believes, like, to me, I think it's sometimes an avoidance of the problem. You know, yeah. we're going to get mad. We're going to get mad. We're going to have a fight. And then instead of, like, confronting and solving the problem okay we're just gonna go into sexy times and fuck it all over and then when you're done fucking has the problem been resolved or what is there some kind of competition where whoever like i don't know last the longest wins or who comes first loses or what <laughs> Robin Morninghead is a game, though. I'm talking about real life reality. It's the it's the naughty game. I haven't played it in a long time. I should go back. Uh, Again. Still a game. <laughs> Not reality. What's it called? Go <laughs> by... Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, wow, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it says game of the game. <laughs> Game of the week, Robin Morningwood adventure is as not safe for work as it sounds. <laughs> Very true. Yep. Wow. Mm -mm. Yeah. I can I can definitely imagine. <laughs> yes, agreed. So oh. back to back oh. to the reason why we're here. Conflicted relationships, a.k.a. struggle bus, is what we're focusing on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, like we always say, right, relationships are not just romantic relationships. These are also friendships. These are work relationships, right? Um, so, I mean, in... <laughs> Maybe fucking it out isn't going to be the answer in all of these kind of relationships, <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
Maybe there are other ways that we can um, that we can uh, resolve these conflicts. Uh, but uh, so, you know, first things first, uh, I think that it's important, like kind of like that we said that uh, struggle exists uh, and that uh, we can't get away from it. Um, you know, there it's. Uh, just like, you know, when I'm working with individuals, right? Like we're going to struggle. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is, I can't, I can't, I can't make that not happen. <laughs> right? That, that, uh, the, I can't, I don't have a, I have, I have my magic wand, um, <laughs> but I can't wave my magic wand and make all the struggles go away. Right. Uh, so, you know, at some point we have to, uh, practice some willingness and acceptance um, that struggles are going to happen and uh, that we're going to tolerate them, right? Uh, and just the same with relationships. So like there is this really great quote with uh, the, the model of therapy that I primarily use, acceptance and commitment therapy, that says, if you're not willing to have it, you will. So like what the way that I frame this to my to my clients is if you're not willing to struggle, you will. Mm. So let that sit all, let that simmer for a second. I'll say it again. If you're not willing to struggle, you will. It <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> I see the wheels turning in Gary's head. Sorry, <laughs> bitch. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. uh, also like a Chinese finger trap, right? Um, so like if you've ever used one of these, right? What happens when you try to pull your fingers out? You get stuck. You get stuck. You get, it, it, it gets harder, right? So what, yes. what, what, what is the thing that like we um, logically think shouldn't work is we push into, uh, push into it, right? So uh, so this I'm saying, I tell my clients, let's push into the struggle. Um, recognize that it's it's just it's going to be there. You can't you can't get away from it. Yeah. You can't stop the struggle ever since. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, I'm going to yeah, use yeah. that with my clients this week. There Child. You there you go. And we mm -hmm. the theater makes yeah. its way in again. <laughs> But no, oh, it, it, makes, I, I, um, it makes sense when you think about it, like your your statement. It makes a lot of sense because, mm -hmm. you know, as we we're just kind of like talking about like those that say that, oh, we don't nothing goes wrong with us. We're perfect relationships. Like, no, you're not. And you need to stop um, fooling yourselves that you are because no one is perfect, first of all. Secondly, um, everyone has issues everyone has conflicts from one shape one way shape or form someone has those issues and if you are denying they exist that doesn't mean they don't exist it just means that you're either avoiding them or um choosing not to engage them which doesn't mean that they won't go away usually means they're going to sit or right there in a yeah even call or, or that like you recognize nice. that they are or that you recognize that they are there right like so mm -hmm. like the other way that i frame it is like the other way works too so like if you know if you're not willing to have it you will right but if you are willing to have it you won't have it as much right so like you're not going to notice it as much so like what you may see what like somebody may see as like the worst conflict in the world right if you're willing to allow that conflict to be there um, may not seem as a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. like something else that like I like to 
kind of talk to my clients is, you know, like that trope in movies or like TV where like sometimes the antagonist or the comic relief will be seen like kind of like flailing their arms in water and like, oh my God, I'm drowning. Oh my God, I'm drowning. Right. And then like, you know, the, the camera pans back and the, the hero or the protagonist is like, oh, stand up. You're fine. And they're only in like six inches of water. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's kind of it's that's kind of the, that's kind of like the way I frame it that like I'm just asking you to to be like you're okay that conflict is supposed to be there um, just stand up right if that conflict was or if that struggle was supposed to be there um, <laughs> how do you think you know if I told you that you're okay <laughs> right um, <laughs> how do you think that you would respond differently. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think that's really challenging because if a person truly believes that, you know, they are in like distress or whatever, I don't know if candidly telling them that they're not in the situation they think they're in will help them. Um, but I, I think that's a strength for really what you're trying to say, Ed, which is, you know, that what what you're dealing with or what you're facing is not necessarily what you think it is. Um, and that there's a different context to it. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not struggling. Um, mm -hmm. I'm asking them, will, uh, will you accept the fact? Are you, can you, um, do you have the willingness to struggle? Mm -hmm. Can, can you struggle? Like, can, can we struggle right now? So Would that we can talk this out. Mm-hmm. So I have a question. Would it be fair as an analogy, which is completely inappropriate, but however, hear me out. Would it be appropriate as an analogy to say, if you are willing to experience a little bit of pain, you get to the pleasure on the other side? Um, yeah, like I would say that, um, so with any kind of conflict resolution, Right. That like, you know, I will talk to my clients that like a lot of times they will think, well, when there's conflict, that means that there's something wrong or like something bad is going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, well, why does something bad have to happen? Um, a lot of positive things happen after conflict. Like we can't have change without some form of conflict. Fair. Okay. That makes sense. Seems reasonable. So also. Yeah. So like also with um, couples who say that they don't argue and everything. And I, I will say, so you've never grown as a couple. <laughs> I don't have a fan. <laughs> I can't participate. I've never grown as, you've never grown as a couple. I'm like, oh, and I oop. <laughs> That's yes. So, uh, nap. Yes, that makes sense. Absolutely. No, and, and I think, I think that's where the difficulty is. Is um, my guess would be that there's it's a difference between like a uh, a very closed view versus like an open or bigger view. Mm. You know, like like the bigger picture, global view, however you want to say it. You know, um, because I think you know when you're struggling and you're in the midst of something and you're having conflict, that's the focus. Mm -hmm. And so it could become difficult and, to know, step like, out. Of that. Yeah, ahead. and I think that like what we're going to talk about with like the different kind of like the stuff. Well, not really styles, but like forms of conflict um, and like the antidotes. Uh, I think that sometimes people view conflict within like this negative view, right? When like sometimes conflict is um, showing somebody appreciation. Sometimes conflict is. Um, you know, going and uh, you know, uh, practicing some breathing when you're when you are really feeling stressed out and when you feel like you are struggling, right? Like that is like using positive, right? Like sh like conflict isn't always yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. Right. You could throw objects at them. Exactly. Um, you could fuck them. Yeah, but, well, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in support of domestic violence. I was just trying to be add some humor yeah. to it. It's a yeah, dramatic yeah. example, but I no, I, yeah, I think that that's uh, pretty fair. 
when it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, if it's either so, or, or, um, or thing, maybe a competition sort of thing, like uh, who can make the best brownies or something, would be fine. Yeah. To, to I don't not know, I have think a sexual conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so when I am, um, like, okay, so like when a, a new couple comes to see me, right? Like I'm, I'm usually asking them about, uh, the way that they resolve disagreements or, or something, or, you know, I'm asking them like, what are the, um, the challenges that they experience in their relationship, right? Like, uh, you know, like what are the goals that you want to achieve and what are the, um, what are the, the, the barriers that you think that we're going to encounter on our way there, right? And sometimes I will hear, well, my partner is, um, sometimes my partner, my partner is very critical or sometimes my partner, um, you know, won't respond when I'm trying to talk to them. Um, or, you know, my partner's mean, right? Um, so, like, sometimes we have um, unhelpful ways that we respond in conflict situations, right? And mm -hmm. uh, John Gottman, who is a, uh, you know, world-renowned um, relationship therapist, uh, has, you know, through his research, um, has uh, developed um, and identified four horsemen or four characteristics of uh, uh, couples um, who are on their way to divorce, right? So like if you have these in your, com in your, your disagreement styles, you are more likely to divorce. So mm. they are stonewalling. So stonewalling is when we're having a disagreement and you just don't talk, right? Um, mm. You are, um, you know, you're just, um, you just stop responding, right? And that could be a, uh, that could be an indication that that part, that that partner is psychologically flooded, like they cannot respond because they are at a point where they are so you know, emotionally stressed out um, that they just can't say anything, right? Mm. Um, or discuss things rationally. So they mm -hmm. just stonewall. Um, and, you know, that is something that, that happens. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, the, the things, you know, to counteract that. But um, that happens, right? And then Another really common one is criticism. Uh, okay. And criticism is something that I think that we're all kind of familiar with. Um, so that okay. is the idea that we are, um, you know, uh, we are kind of uh, taking somebody's inventory or we are reading them uh, for filth sometimes. Uh, uh -huh. You know, like, we are we are being very critical of them. Uh, you know, there's a, um, I guess you want to say like a therapy uh, stereotype that uh, you know when couples are in therapy that they're supposed to say, well, I feel this and I feel that, right? And that's mm -hmm. not very untrue, right? Like, because a lot of times when people are um, having conflict, they're using a lot of you language. Well, you always do this and you, um, you know, you never call me when you say that you're going to do and, you know, you, you always do this and you always do that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's it's not helpful um, because what do you think the um, response to criticism is going to be? Like, uh, Damon, if I, um, sure. But if I'm tell, it's like, uh, like Damon, if I'm just telling you all about yourself, right. And I'm telling you, you're a terrible person. What do you have? Like, what do you think your response is? Going to be? Like my response? Oh God. Um, I would probably, I would, I know I would react negatively. It would probably be something to the, along the lines of either a, 
a yell back or an anger back kind of countering are probably throwing something <laughs> getting like getting, right. i would yeah i would get i would yeah i would probably get more upset than anything else and and i wouldn't really or maybe shut down even depending on how truthful the criticism is um so like so yeah i mean so you know like by like shutting down you would like stonewall mm-hmm. yep. right um, but like if you were if you were to respond right you would probably respond um like because you know when when we use language like you do this and you always do that that's kind of like an attack right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah right yeah. like yeah. when when people are attacking us what what is our natural response when somebody is attacking us? What do we want to do? Defend ourselves. We want to defend ourselves. So like a lot of times we will we will get defensive, which is the third horseman, um, which is the response <laughs> to criticism um, because it becomes like a like kind of like a game of tennis. Well, if you're going to um, if you're going to criticize me, I'm going to have to defend myself. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to defend myself and then I'm just going to follow that up with a criticism to you. Mm. So, um, so it becomes this really unhelpful Ow. tennis game um, with, and nobody wins um, because it's, like we're just attacking each other. It's when you're at deuce 44, 40 and someone uh is a scores advantage and then the next person scores scores another point which gets rid of the other advantage and then the next person has to do another score to and then it's just the 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 game is just going on and on and on and on and on endlessly that's why tennis is one of the worst sports in all the world for those of us who watch it (laughs) and then right um and you know so like typically in that like we're kind of going back and forth and like we are feeling more increasingly stressed out so like in order to maybe make this stop we may want to um you know kind of deliver that final blow um like kind of like using just analogy like that 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 power shot that we know is going to like just win, mm-hmm. right? And that's called contempt, right? So that's a communication style where we are treating the other person with disrespect. We're mocking them, we're ridiculing them, we're calling them names, um, we're, you know, uh, we're mimicking them. <laughs> like we've all mm-hmm. seen that. Like, and <laughs> I see that just like that. Now, like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> yeah, that does not help. But it feels good <laughs> to you. Well, you. It does feel good in, in, the, <laughs> yeah, in, the, in the short term, right? And also, like other body language um, that is that isn't really, um, you know, verbal communication is eye rolling or scoffing. There goes half of Gary for coming. Um, it's, hey. it's a form of uh, <laughs> I can defend myself. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> I was about to say, hold on. Some people genetically cannot help themselves. They have crafted a behavior that has gone their entire life. So just be aware. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't brood to you. I just serve it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, don't pour it on your lap, bitch. I hear it burns. <laughs> <sighs> We love each other. Um, so, yeah. This is proper. Co- She's conflict my sister. <laughs> exactly. Um, there, there's a lot of visuals so, like, in this but, one. But sorry, to all yeah. the audio fo- listeners. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, but c- contempt, um, mm-hmm. contempt can often it goes it goes beyond criticism um, because we are uh, we are attacking somebody's character. When yeah. we are, when we're using contempt, um, and it's uh, usually assuming a, a a position of moral su- uh, superiority over them. 
Yeah. Um, the other cool thing, well, I don't know if it's a cool thing, but contempt um, is also uh, more likely, people who have contempt are more likely to suffer from infectious in illnesses um, due to a weakened immune system. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's something I've not heard of, but it makes, I guess it could make sense. Yeah, when we have like a, uh, when we are continu- continuous, continuously percolating negative thoughts about our partner, um, that can have a negative impact on our immune system. Um, and yeah, and contempt is also the single greatest predictor of divorce. So it has to be eliminated. Mm-hmm. Is there a vaccine for that? No. <laughs> there, uh, there is. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, uh, kind of. <laughs> let's let's not get too twisted on this. But before we get into like, uh, anyways, I, I have many thoughts. <laughs> So many thoughts, Gary. Well, no, because I was like, wait, hold up. Like, this whole, like, contempt, you know, uh, makes you, you know, more susceptible, blah, 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 blah. But then as you were describing it, I'm like, okay, I get it. Um, What I'm curious to know is whether or not there's been any studies done on whether or not contempt leads to adverse behaviors. And by that, I mean, like, so in the field of that I work in now, when it comes to STDs and HIV, one of the things that we talk about is like, you know, people exhibit, um, you know, behaviors that are not in their best interest. And by that, I mean, like they make decisions without having full knowledge of the situation that they're in. Most likely they are not aware of their own status on any of those fronts or the status of their partners. And Mm -hmm. that makes them susceptible to things. And so what I'm curious about, and I don't expect you to have an answer, is whether or not, like, if you're in that, you know, mode or potentially any of these for quote unquote horsemen, horse people, uh, you know, whatever that is that, that, that makes them like, you know what I mean? That it's kind of a slippery slope and that it potentially has some type of exponential factor, you know, that shows, you know, that you would quite possibly or are more significantly whatever the ratio is you know what i mean the percentage to make you know decisions that are not in your best interest um Mm. it's got me thinking Mm. because you know uh i think that we've discussed it before i don't know if we said it exactly like this but hormones are are hellacious because they can override you know the the thinking parts of you that most people would consider more logical um, you know, in the decision making mm-hmm. processes that you have. And so you might end up doing things that you, you know, shortly after or down the road, you know, think about or reconsider and be like, oh, I didn't realize, you know, that doing these things would have these effects on me. Mm-hmm. 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 It's got me thinking. Not that I'm in the mood to, like, you know, write a research paper or do a study on it at the moment. But, <laughs> you know. It's a thing. Have so that being said, um, I th- go ahead. Um, I'm trying to think about what you were talking about with the um, decision making. Do you mean like, like negative self um Evaluate like negative self evaluative, um, like negative thoughts about themselves and the world. Not necessarily that, like, like you were talking about, um, you know, having contempt like, kind of wears you down in terms of like your actual like immuno response. And so, mm-hmm. what I'm wondering is, is like if that's a high stress situation, you know, or a period of time. I wonder what the correlation is that you could connect that to like some people end up making decisions that are not of their best interest that make them more susceptible to other things that could, you know, um, lead them to addiction, could have them, you know, committing behaviors that, you know, um, you know, could have adverse effects. They, you know, um, an individual could become pregnant when they weren't planning to. They could end up, you know, with an infection of some kind. 
um, you know, and doing things. That's what I mean. I, is, guarantee, you know, I guarantee you that Brene Brown has done a study on this. <laughs> Well, then I'm disappointed in you, Ed, because you just can't pull it out of your butt, like, you know, as one of her faithful <laughs> promoters. <laughs> no, I'm teasing Ed, because no, he think, loves her dearly, um, so. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't disagree with you, but I would be really intrigued to see if that was a, if there was such a thing. Um, but that's just kind of my thing, and obviously it's not a work day, and I shouldn't probably be bringing that to the podcast, so. <laughs> Gary. You don't well, work until tomorrow. No, um, no, but it. Hey, people are having sex all the time. Like that's but, all there is to it. So. <laughs> I mean, but like we are talking about like the landscape of relationships and the relationship that we have with you know not just romantic partners but the relationship with um, our caseworkers, the relationship that we have with society, the relationship that we have with. Well, I think that contempt definitely plays a role in all of that. So oh, I'm I. Sure think that you're definitely onto something and i'm now intrigued I have yeah slight i'm intrigued in the fact that my my uh company is still hiring but they they tend to have people start like one every week a different group and we have at least a two or three week trainings training regimen ah wow. right okay so so um you know so in order to so with contempt, right? So we can recognize that it's not helpful, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing with, um, eh, we'll get to it, but um, with, uh, so like with all of these four horsemen, there are antidotes with these that I will teach, um, you know, my couples and also individuals um, ways that we can counteract these and to like kind of go down the list. So with criticism, so, we, you know, we're not going to be verbally attacking somebody's personality or character. Instead, we're going to be gently, uh, like, have a gentle startup. So, like, you know, um, sometimes we will, uh, you know, walk into, walk into the room and be like, you didn't do the dishes like you said you were going to do, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you know, with, with this, it's, it's um, having a gentle startup would be like, hey, um, can we, you know, hey, can I, t can I tell you something, right? Um, you know, having a, a um, some time, right, to kind of soften the blow that there's something that you're upset about, right? Um, say, hey, you know, like, can we talk about something? I'm feeling a little upset, or I'm feeling upset that um, the dishes are not done, and you agreed that you were going to be doing them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, things like that. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, by expressing a positive need. Right. And, you know, I kind of, um, I would really appreciate, right. You to do those. Right. So I can get, I can focus my energy on getting the laundry done. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to do the laundry. Can you do the dishes? Like I asked you to, um, <laughs> Thanks. See, that, I appreciate last, that. That last little part was the zigger, though. <laughs> that last little light about, like I asked you to. That's the zigger part. I was like, mm, I don't. Know. As much as I like, hey, feel good to say that, I don't know. I need to do the laundry. Could you do the dishes? Great. Thanks. I appreciate that. Like we agreed upon. Yeah. That is the. That so would be the thing I would okay. kind of say. So, I appreciate so like that. we agreed upon. Like we talked about, I would know. really appreciate that. Yeah, really appreciate it if you could get that taken care of. That'd be great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna need you Thank to. You. Have you seen We're my stapler? <laughs> I was just gonna say that was so off the space. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I get it. And then I had two different, two different references at the same time. But I get it though. Like it's. Because when we, okay, so like kind of like you said, when we, when you talk aggressively with someone, you're going to kind of get it back in twain. Like it's not going to be a, a, I mean, most of the time, not all the time. I mean, some people are passive and they won't fight or whatever until they get to a certain point. But for the most part, you're going to get back what you give. So if you're mm -hmm. gently, like you say, gently starting up and like, 
not being like overly um not being overly aggressive or critical yeah but maybe approaching it from a less you know a, a more neutral you know backdrop you know as opposed to super fucking you know negative and angry or whatever like i told you to fucking do the dishes why haven't you fucking done the dishes yet um like that to our like well i guess he's not doing the dishes i guess i'll do them again whatever and i'll just yep well yeah. you're yep. not gonna do the dishes then i suppose i will but then you you also if you do that it's kind of teaching them it's like well, I don't have to do the dishes ever because they'll, they'll eventually you'll do it it'll be fine. Yep. Yep. Give them an inch and they'll take a mile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The boundaries. Then why are you yeah. in a relationship? I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean that's a whole it's, big old question, ass, Gary. Cock. Like you could that's a whole question that you could ask yourself, which is why some comedies are in the divorce. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, physicality does not make a marriage or a relationship. Just say it. What? Period. <laughs> I so, can't um, someone purely for their ass and body. <gasps> I mean, that could be just a completely different type no. of relationship. But, you yeah, know what you true. can do? You can, appre- you can appreciate your partner for all of the, um, the positive qualities and find gratitude um, mm. in all of the, the positive actions that they have taken, right? And that, you know what that can do? That can help counteract contempt. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're feeling like really critical of your partner, you could be like, oh, but that ass. <laughs> I really like that ass. I appreciate- And we're back to the happy place. <laughs> I know. Mm. That's too much of a light bulb switch for me. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't see that. Like, think about the ass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for the ass and the fact that he is a great kisser. Oh, he's he's also gracious. sweet in other aspects. It's just this one little thing. It's just this one little thing. It's just one little thing. Mm-hmm. One yeah. Thing. But, but little again, thing. for the, yep. like, again, I agree with like, you know, appreciating things because um, when you do like, you know, yeah, he didn't do the dishes, but he did like, uh, take out the trash when I didn't ask him to. You know, or he didn't do the dishes. You took out the trash. I'm going to do the laundry. Can you take care of the dishes? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm really glad you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for taking and... out. Thank you for taking out the trash for doing this. And I appreciate you doing that. Uh, but I have more could you also. You. It'd be um, great. And Gottman has this. Uh, magic ratio that he has for appreciation uh, versus contempt. So, um, you know, the ratio is for every uh, one criti- critical or like contemptuous thing that we that we do, right? That should be um, matched with five appreciative uh, things. Um, five, yes. Yeah. So, like something something that I will do with my couples is. Um, in order to get them in the habit of uh, appreciation, I will, um, at the end of every day, they are to uh, communicate to their partner what are three things that they appreciate that their partner did that day. Mm. Okay, fair. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so sometimes, and sometimes they have to dig. Um, and that's kind of the point. Yeah. Well, that was that was going to be my point. Yes. Is, is I was I wasn't willing to be so zen as these two. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Because they were all like, you know, suddenly they were all namaste and they were like getting all zed about the booty. And I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't think I could just like. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Gary. He's got a very nice cock. He's got a very nice cock. <laughs> no, 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 that's not, that, that, it wasn't just about the booty. It was just the whole point that you were just all like, you know. Like going into that mindset, I was like, I'm pretty sure, like, if I'm not, you know, I, I think we're being, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you know, how in a theater sometimes you need to have exaggerated movements for the back of the back of the audience. I think we're going along that line. No, I, it, it I was know. all I, an exaggeration. I know, and I, I'm poking fun at, at the the silliness of it uh, to help people understand, like, like you know, we're not being perfect representations of this like you know it, it takes time and it takes craft and i think the biggest thing by far is like while there are antidotes they take effort mm -hmm. it is work to yeah. counterbalance these you know uh these characteristics these are not things yeah, these, that, these they're not like vaccine where it's kind of like like you get a shot or two and then then you're good to go this is this is this is consumables if you have an antidote, but it happens yeah, again, you're going to have to take another antidote. Yeah, yep. And these are things that, like, you know, I tell, you know, I have one week, oh, usually one hour a week with people. I'm like, you know, I expect that you're going to practice and use these outside of this space um, mm -hmm. because this is, like, kind of like what we talked about um a couple of months ago, right? Like we have to use this um, during the times when we don't need it, when we when it comes up for a time when we do need it. Mm -hmm. That's fair. You know, like we learn to swim when we're not drowning, so that when we need that skill, when the water is rough, we'll be able to swim. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and so, you know, that appreciation is, is really, uh, can be really difficult, but it's also really helpful because a lot of times, especially men, um, don't realize that they're being critical. Sometimes they feel like they're being helpful. <laughs> no, this is how you do it. I'm just providing yep. you the feedback. Oh, fuck, yep. that's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was good feedback. I didn't say it was positive feedback. I didn't say it was helpful feedback. I just said it was feedback. I didn't say but... it was feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's hashtag mansplaining. You, you know what happened? <laughs> okay. Oh. You know that thing where you take a microphone and put it next to to the speaker that the microphone is connected to? That's the type of feedback yeah. that's happening. Mm. Yeah, right. yeah um but you know what it's it's kind of sad and you know having to explain to a man right the reasons as to why he does that um is almost like uh letting you know almost like dorothy seeing the man behind the the curtain mm. right like you do that because you think that your only value is in your actions fair uh, and they're like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, it's really, it's really interesting when like, I'm like the need that you have is you need to feel useful. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, that is the underlying need that you are wanting to be met and you can have that met in other ways. You don't have to mansplain in order to get that met. <laughs> True. Yeah, grad school, grad school screwed up my ability to see things. <laughs> <laughs> I I know I've had to. I, the thing that I mostly had to most had to do in not like my relationship per se, but just like in work relationships, is realize. I've, yes, I've been in this job, my job for a long time, but um, I there's still stuff that I don't know, and there's still stuff like, especially recently, since we've transitioned to a third party administrator, 
they're going to be doing things differently than the way I do them. So I have to realize that they may get the same results and they may not be able to explain it the same way I would have, but that doesn't mean they did it wrong. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Ooh. Which kind of which kind of leads into my next thing, like taking responsibility, right? Uh-huh. So, like, in order to in order to uh, counteract uh, defensiveness, we need to um, take responsibility for what is ours and leave the rest, right? Mm-hmm. Like I like we talked about with forgiveness, right? Like we don't have to accept responsibility for one hundred percent of what is being served to us. Right. Like mm. if somebody is serving us, uh, uh, somebody is serving us, I see we can say, I'll take 10 percent of that. I'll take a little bit. Right. I'll take response. To, uh, you know, you can fill that up halfway. Yeah. Right. I don't need it all. I don't need mm. all of that. Please. No. I, I know. Hey, take thank you. Thank you for. Right. <laughs> I can't take all of that. Oh, well. That, oh, wow. Uh, Shit. Uh, 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 so. <laughs> My oh. thought, like no, but my thought is honestly that there's a limit. Mm-hmm. Like, baby, you might think I could take all of that, but I'm telling you right now that is not going to happen. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh no no. Mm-hmm. There's only you... so much that could be filled, and then that's yep. it. So. <laughs> Don't so much I'm willing right, to take. and that's kind of which, and that leads into the stonewalling. Right. But before we kind of get into there, right, that like, you know, it is okay, right, to be wrong, right? It's okay to have messed up. And I think that's one thing that um, just like it's okay to struggle, it's okay to be wrong. It's it's okay to make a mistake. Um, You're going, um, you know, like that's where the vulnerability comes in. That's where the intimacy comes in, right? Like if you're, if your partner is coming to you saying, Hey, you didn't do the dishes like you said that you were going to, instead of saying, but I, but I, blah, 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 right. Saying, you know what? You're right. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Right. Yeah. Right. That's um, fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, that's probably one of the most significant impacts in my life, especially I learned it from my professional like career stuff was to to take criticism and just be open to it and be like. You're not you're not always in control. You're not always mm-hmm. perfect, like no matter how hard you strive to get like the the, you know, full, you know, five point on the five point scale, like it's just not necessarily going to happen like and, you know, just because you think it would fed fabulously doesn't mean someone else sees it that way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and so I like Jeff was just exhibiting like that whole neutral, you know, kind of acceptance, I think is pivotal in leaving it open the opportunity, like to yeah. hear what is being said. It doesn't necessarily mean that you agree, like, but there's a big difference between like having a closed door and having an open mind. Do you know what I mean? Like to, mm-hmm. to kind of yep. have some of that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Like well, and how that and and how that would go differently, right? Um, where I'm not, you know, I'm not taking all of that tea, right? Is like uh, you know, you know what? Like you never do the dishes when I tell you to, you know. Um, like that's where it's like, hey, <laughs> um, I recognize that I I recognize that you asked me to do the dishes. And I did not do the dishes, or I have not done the dishes. I will, I will go and do the dishes. But right. let's not say that I I'm never never do the dishes. Yeah. It's, un, it's, it's, right, it's, it's not. It's not fair. Trap, yeah. Traps when they say right. you rarely ever do the dishes. God, no. Right. So you don't look. Yeah, I've done the dishes. Take, respons- take responsibility for what's yours. No. I, yeah. Okay. I did, I did the, the dishes right. before. Well, right, and I think the key thing in this kind of example is like, you know, dealing in absolutes is probably not the best approach. Yeah, yeah it's that's always a uh, um, one of my uh, guidelines, right? Like, we're not gonna always, we're not gonna never, Don't you know, do the dishes. we're gonna sometimes, and we're gonna maybe. Yeah. Um, So like, so with the, you know, I can't take all of that, right? So like we have Mm -hmm. limits, 
right? So like we need to know when we are at our breaking point, right? Or when our mm-hmm. cup is full, right? Before we kind of get into the stonewalling phase. And we need to recognize that it is our responsibility um, to take care of us, right? Um, and to let our partner know um, about that, mm-hmm. right? So like, you know, when my cup is not yet runneth over, right? But when I'm getting full, it's like, hey, uh, I'm kind of feeling um, angry or I'm kind of feeling, you know, a certain way. Can we can we take a break for about 20 minutes um, and then come back and talk about this? It's mm-hmm. really important, though, to put a time limit on that because you don't want to leave the other person hanging mm-hmm. with uh, when, um, when you will return. This where you uh, so you don't want to make break? it longer no what was, <laughs> what was that no this is when you go you know this is when you enter the fuck break let's go let's no, go because, fuck and then we'll because there isn't it. a specific time frame where where you would finish i suppose oh right i was gonna say don't leave them with blue balls because that's not cool <laughs> mm-hmm yeah, so you want to you want to do Wait, something what? that is, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so you want to do something that's soothing and and distracting. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes mm-hmm. sense. And then come back and 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 talk. Um, mm-hmm. So those are the um, those are kind of the the things that kind of come up often when it comes to like struggles or, or, um, conflict. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to, the other kind of important thing to talk about is that there's sometimes that conflicts are unsolvable. What? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. What? We're, 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 so you're you not going to solve this conflict in the 22 minute uh, episode. No, yeah. no, 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 this is an intelligence um, show. This is, this is different. Maybe it's a two parter in that case, but still. Oh, okay, okay. So 44. Got it. Okay. Yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so 69% of conflicts that, that couples, uh, <laughs> Uh, argue about um, are unsolvable. Sorry. That's so interesting. That, that, they that are called, number is they are, that number is yeah uh, specific in, in this in this environment. I'm I'm troubled by this end. I'm going to be honest. I don't like reading that two thirds of the time, a little more than two thirds of the time, that a conflict is unsolvable. So like um, so when. So and those are called gridlock issues, right? So like what um what that means is that like these are issues that like people are constantly butting heads about that mm-hmm. like there will be no resolution because it's something that like um like it's like a conflict about like the partner's personality or like something that is literally mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. solvable. Right. Mm-hmm. Like uh, something about like the the like uh, sometimes a lot of times um, family issues come up. Right. Like mm-hmm. I don't like your mother. Right. Um, stuff like that. It's like I can't do anything about that. <laughs> right. Um, and so what the uh, the issue is or the, the 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 fix is, is turning the gridlock into um, like conversation or discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So that we find out what is what is underneath this conflict. Mm. Right. What is the need that you have um, that is uh, in conflict? Because usually it's an emotional need that isn't being met. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And um, your mother being just like, I I just don't like her. That's not enough. I need to know why you don't like her. Like, what about her? don't you like is it the way she talks to you is it something that she said is it something that could potentially be you know not resolved but can be discussed um 
are if you are you feel like she's gonna be stuck in her ways for the rest of your life and you don't have to interact with her anymore, then so be it. Like uh I'd rather not to be that be the case, but if that's what can will work, then we'll see what we can do. Um I'm not liking it, so what can we what can we do about that? Because I don't want you to not be in our her to be in our lives, but if you don't like her, what can I do to make that a little better? Well, because sometimes, and this is why we need to talk about it, it's not a problem with the mother-in-law. It's a problem with your own mother uh, that you haven't resolved. So the so the mother-in-law has nothing Sorry. to do with it. It's not it has nothing to do with the mother-in-law. It's your. It's I'm the problem. Yeah. It's, it's not her. I, I'm the problem. It's me. It's me. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's not always the case. No, 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 no. I, I agree. No. There's, there's an excellent like marketing campaign right now that came to mind as we were just discussing this and that cracked me up. And it made me think of the Old Spice body wash, the line that's for men because it has lavender mm-hmm. in it. And um, how the mother-in-law is using the robe and using up all of the the product, <laughs> uh-huh. and it, I was thinking, um, that is not something that's unresolvable. There is there can't be resolutions to it. You just have to work on it. Like mm-hmm. my <laughs> issue did. is that my body wash and my robe is being used by your mother. Asked, can you please ask your mother to right. get the fuck out of my room? Like. <laughs> Get out my space. Stop using my shit. <laughs> this is why we have master baths. <laughs> you got a whole other fucking bathroom right next to your place where you're staying that has plenty of little washes mm-hmm. and little tubes and little stuff and scented and scent soaps and shit. Like you got all of that over there. Use that. This over here. This is mine. This is this is issues. Okay. The fact that somebody is using my stuff so that I can't use the full bottle like I'm intending to do eventually. I'm not going to use it all at once, of course. Oh, you know. Oh, okay. So, okay, so let's 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 I'm be nice miss about that it. one okay. shower. That's that I won't be able to use this bottle of of uh, <laughs> a, a, a body wash uh, with. Yeah. That. It says on the bottle, it says it's for men. That's me. Hey, my, eh. my wife or my husband, to, to really do it more along our lines, has his own bottle. Or maybe we share between the two of us, but it's for the two of us. Yeah. If you would like a bottle, we can get mm. you one, maybe. Or you can bring your own. Anyways. Oh! Criticism. Criticism. Sorry. <laughs> so we're talking about conflict resolution here. Resolution. Okay. Okay. What we were talking about is that two thirds of the time it's not resolvable. That's the part that was just flooring me a little bit. That's all. But I, I kind of can understand yeah. that it's when I think thirds. about it, because. I mean, sometimes things don't, they don't get resolved. They just get, like, we're, we're you know, we're going to, I don't know, I hate, you, you come to an agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say agree to disagree, but like that, you know, it's not a resolving conflict. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh, the word just left my head. It's an acceptance. No. Acceptance of the disagreement. Where you both okay, oh, compromise. Compromise. There's the word. Compromise. You come to a compromise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that's the case. That's not necessarily a resolution. Yeah. It's an yeah. So conflict. like, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Doctor Gottman uh, says that compromise never feels perfect. Everybody gains something and everybody loses something. The important mm-hmm. thing is feeling understood, respected, and honored in your dreams. There you go. 
Yeah, so I agree. I don't think that necessarily always solves the conflict, but mm. it helps patch it a little bit, makes it a little easier to live and sustain each other and, and set complete and sustain the relationship, I should say. Excuse me. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have a conflict resolution and I'm going to have the resolve tomorrow when I go into work because I have on my calendar and I'm supposed to be in a depot on Wednesday and no lawyer or attorney is talking to me about whether, one, we're still doing it, and two, has prepped me for this deposition that I have never done before. So... Yep. And I put it on my calendar back in May. Oh. So... June, July, August, September? Um, yeah, three I, plus months, perhaps four months. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. And we've gotten an email, like there were some emails back in August about like them asking someone, like one of the other specialists to be a part of the conversation. And I was like, okay. Well, here you go. Here's, you know, we've we've already answered this question. Sorry. The answer to this question has been previously provided. <laughs> 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 but here's the answer again, in case you forgot. That was a part of it. Wait, no, let's cut that part off. I didn't say that last part of the sentence. Oh. Here's the answer again. By the way. That really sounds, David, that really sounds like, Per my previous email. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah. You know, it like is. I, I mentioned, I mentioned, I mentioned, I think if I'm remembering the email correctly, I said, um, as previously discussed and provided, we have, you know, determined that the person that was provided this information no longer has that information. They did not keep it. They deleted it. We've already kind of told you that. So... Yeah. What do you want? Anyway, so, but uh, again, I was called, I was, it was mentioned that I would be part of this deposition. And that happened again, like I said, back in May, I think. And here we are. It's literally on Wednesday, I think. Right. And I've not had any conversations about it further. I haven't had a prep. I'm for a follow up. So, yeah. 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 Anyways, moving on. Anyway, but again, yeah, I agree. Like with the whole, I I, I get the whole sixty nine percent of conflicts are unsolvable. Un unsolvable. It makes sense to me because it's as it meant, I think you mentioned above. Like sometimes they're ongoing. Right. Right. And I think it's uh, I think part of that is finding out. Oh, okay. Is this something that we can? uh solve right is this like is this something that we can uh resolve or is this something that we need to have a conversation about right um mm -hmm. and um you know like and the uh, part is you know one of the thing is not being like recognizing that not everything's going to be solved mm -hmm. agree and that's I, okay too yeah uh, I just, it makes sense when I start thinking about it. Some things just aren't going to be solved. Like, just, just, I, I mean, saw I know something it's on. Keep going, go ahead. So, I saw something the other, I saw something um, a little while ago that uh, really hit home with me that when these kind of issues come up, um, it really uh, forces the person who is having the conflict to go, my partner can't meet all of my needs. I mm. have to meet my own needs sometimes. Mm. And that can be really difficult. Right. Like with the mother-in-law example, right? Like you're not gonna be able to meet my need right of this body wash whatever <laughs> right um, yeah right like i mean like say we use the example of like uh you know i just don't like your mother-in-law well is it the fact you know is it a her thing or is it a you thing right and like mm. um that it's a need that you have that like you're not going to you need a mom 
Mm. Right. Yeah. You need a relationship with your mom, and uh, you don't have that. Yeah. Maybe it's out of jealousy. Or maybe you and the mother-in-law's personalities are very similar. And therefore, there's that, that conflict of just, like, you're probably always doing the things for, for, like, the partner because you both know what to do because you, you know, one, the mother-in-law knows the, the, the son use that, or uh, you guys have been in a relationship long enough where you know what to do. So you tend to be, like, you tend to butt heads because you're essentially doing the same things with it would be great if you guys could talk and maybe form a compromise where like one like mother in law you hopefully you will understand that uh, we're together now and I know there's things that you did for him well I can do those now and if he needs you he will ask you for that help or if I need assistance, I will ask you, but please let me take care of your son. Now, I just got the ding of approval. <laughs> uh, that is a conversation that the son needs to have with the mom, though. Uh, I mean, true, but... <laughs> mom. If, you, if anyway. you can't resolve it, at least try to go for a compromise to lessen the blow. Mm-hmm. Essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, that's been fun. Is there anything else, mm-hmm. Mr. Edward? Um, so I did put something down here on um the the conflict br- blueprint. Um and that um Ow. which is just like a way to uh, kind of structure things like I always like to tell um, my clients to schedule time to process conflict. Hey, can we um, can we sit down at this time and talk about this? Right. And then I will say, think about this kind of like a tennis match. Right. Mm. Um, that but instead of using the four horsemen, we're using the antidotes. Right. So like. Mm. We're going to, um, one person is going to be talking at a time, right? They're going to discuss the issue as they see it, right? For like 20 minutes, right? The only time that we are going to talk is if we need clarifying information. We're not going to um, uh, defend ourselves or something like that. If there's something that they're saying that we don't understand, we can gain clarifying information, but that's it. And upon that, that's when we um, can respond. And we go until we get to some kind of understanding or compromise. Right. Sounds mm-hmm. good. Um, <laughs> and then when we are when we are dealing with attachment injuries, right? That's when I would. Um, refer everybody back to my forgiveness or our forgiveness uh, podcast that like sometimes we do need to apologize um, for things that we have done. Mm. And that is an art. Yes, it is. And that would be episode Mm -hmm. 609, by the way. Ah, there we go. So less than 10 episodes ago. Too late. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, I guess the other, um, the other thing I would say is like there are a bunch of books on this, and um, there is, um, you know, I mean, there are people out there who, like myself, who can help um, people navigate this, right? So, like, if um, you know, you think that you would like some help with uh, learning these skills, right? Like there are uh, Gottman trained 
therapists out there who can, you know, help you with these skills. Um, and, you know, um, you can always feel free to reach out to me and I can help you find somebody. Mm-hmm. And you have a few articles linked here. I do have a few articles. In the show notes. <sighs> Um, and there is a, a book that I want to put in there as well. Um, I will find it though. It'll be, oh, there's also a, um, there is a, an email newsletter from the Gottman Institute, um, that is, uh, you know, said to improve your, um, your, your relationship, um, quickly. Um, it's like a very, uh, you know, uh, I guess just a, uh, you know, a newsletter that kind of gives you snippets of things that you can do for your, your relationship. Um, I can put that in there too. Cool. Oh, resources. Anything for any of these episodes should be, should have, shouldn't, in the show notes so if you ever want to uh check any of those out you can pop over to cubsoutlot.com and then you know, post for everybody uh usually within two days of us recording it uh then you can have a quick access to all of them nice there is reasons to actually visit our website at cubsoutlot.com big to which mm-hmm. Is there anything else before we end? I don't think so. Cool. Well, that's the end. As I said, pop over to the website, get all the links for this. You can also comment on the blog for any of these episodes as well. You can shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our entourage chat and see when we go live and have some various other discussions and see a bunch of different memes uh, over at <laughs> nineyearold.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we plan to record these shows, you can pop over to our Google Calendar at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements such as uh, Cups Outline mug, Cups Outline shirts, consent of my foreplay shirts, shirts there's also like uh soup bowls and chili bowls oh and trust me i love this soup bowl so much (laughs) thanks vanna um (laughs) also the the consent of my four plays were created by smashy um who has other stuff too outside of what he has done for us and so you can find more of his stuff at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can also pick up a patron at patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud uh you can also send us a little bit of cash at paypal.me slash comes out loud you can find us on apple Podcasts, google play uh amazon audible spotify uh please rate us and um uh, like us or whatever they have for us review us uh, over there it helps people other people find us the best way this place. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box set box, puppy box, gum box, something or other, and Windgem W Y N D G E M on Twitch, where I've been playing a shit ton load of Final Fantasy XIV. Bears and Dragons has wrapped up. We'll be back in Halloween for a brand new campaign with a new set of players, although one one or two are returning, but in any case, um on Halloween. So Damon, where where can people find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on most very related sites or uh, on Facebook as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Garber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. And to our guest, Mr. Angelini Cook, where would they get in touch with you if they wanted to online? 
Well, um, you can find me, uh, I mean, I have a website, eactherapy.com. Um, you can, uh, I'm, I'm on TikTok, uh, Unicub79. Um, I'm on Twitter at G, uh, JeepDaddy3. Uh, that's definitely not safe for work. And mm -hmm. um, just let me know who you are um, uh, so I can let you in. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and then my uh, Instagram is unicub underscore sex brain wizard. And with that, say good night, everybody. 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 Good night, everybody.